this announcement in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, Laws of the State of New Jersey. The Borough of Kirk has recorded a schedule of the meetings of the governing body of the Borough of Kenilworth for the year 2022. The Borough Clerk has posted a true copy of the schedule on the bulletin board located at the front entrance of Borough Hall and has mailed true copies of this schedule to the local source, the Star Ledger, and the Home News Tribune. And is maintaining a copy of the schedule in her office during the year 2022. During the public health emergency caused by the coronavirus, the Borough Council will continue to meet on their regularly scheduled meeting dates at 6 p.m. The council meeting will continue to commence as soon as possible after the work session. Accordingly, the notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied with regard to this meeting. Please stand for the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'm going to uh, take the liberty and go out of order. Um, uh, please read uh, Clerk uh, Resolution 93. Resolution 93 is off consent agenda and reads as follows. Whereas the Borough of Kenilworth, County of Union, State of New Jersey, finds it both necessary and appropriate to promote a certain police officer serving with the Kenilworth Police Department, now therefore be it resolved that the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Kenilworth, County of Union, State of New Jersey, hereby promotes Kenneth Brady Jr. to serve as Sergeant with the Borough of Kenilworth Police Department at the pay scale and in accordance with the bargaining agreement and rules and regulations of the Kenilworth Police Department effective immediately. Okay, next for council consideration is a consent. Oh, oh. Sorry about that, Mayor. <laughs> is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought Can I leave this at, at roll call? Is there a second? Second. Okay. Yeah. Councilman Cesare? Yes. Councilman David is excused. Councilman Finistrella? Yes. Councilman Pence? Yes. Councilman Puglisi? Yes. And Councilman Zimmerman? Yes. Okay. The motion passes. Thank you. It's my honor. Uh, It is my honor to perform the oath of office for Sergeant Kenneth Grady, Jr. Safety Commission, uh, Commission, Commissioner Zimmerman, uh, Councilman Pence, Councilman Pablisi, all the members of council, and especially uh, our borough clerk, Laura Robinson, for, for your support. Uh, it's always a tremendous time when we can uh, we can have a guy promoted around here. It's, it's, a, it's a, a time for us to be very, very proud. We spend a lot of time away from our families, 
and for Kenny's family to be here, uh, his wife and kids to be able to see this, it's a great moment. Uh, Kenny's a tremendous police officer. He spent 20 years with us or so, just about 20 years. Started his career in patrol, eventually worked into the detective bureau, and in the last year has been my traffic sergeant uh, and has done a phenomenal job for me. Kenny's one of those guys that uh, I'll call him down in the office, I'll give him a task, I never have to think about it again, it gets done. Uh, he's a great worker. We recently just gave him the, he's running the project to overhaul our radio system, takes care of all our cars, all our maintenance, and does a phenomenal job for me. Uh, I'm very, very proud of him. This has been a long time coming, and I couldn't be any proud of you, Kenny. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to thank Chief Seuss, Mayor, Council, Police Committee. Uh, the Scotia really means a lot to me and my family. Uh, I look forward to working with everybody in the future, and I'm very proud to be able to serve my own town Thank you. Thank you. Not so fast. You know, I'm still uh, for a year. You know, I want to thank the mayor and council also for his promotion. I'm very proud of what Ken has done too. as far as being a police officer. And you let Chief Seuss put your sergeant's badge on. Well, who's your favorite chief, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> they used to wear off my shirt when I was a sergeant. Oh. And I wore them proud. Oh. And I want to give them to you oh. to do the same. Oh, that's so, here you are. Thank you. So nice, congratulations. Thank you. Stacy. Okay. Um, is there, uh, we'll go right into uh, communications and reports. Various advisories were received from the New Jersey State League of Municipalities and the 2022 RVSA assessment was also received. Okay, so a motion to accept communications and reports. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I just have uh, something I'd like to read. Um, many of us have uh, dialed 911 in an emergency and someone always answers and someone always responds without hesitation. <coughs> Most of us, although grateful, we don't spend a lot of time thinking about those people behind the scenes. The sacrifices they make every day in their personal lives to volunteer and serve the barrel. They are devoted members of our community. Many of us don't realize the extent our volunteers sacrifice for us. A time when medical science knew very little about COVID-19, these young girls stepped up in extraordinary ways. On average, riding 250 hours each week, with many of our members riding 24-hour shifts. Several of our EMTs chose to move into the firehouse during this time in order to keep their own family members at home safe, knowing that they may be exposed to COVID-19, giving their life, time, and energy for those who needed help the most. As I always say, they are the very best of all of us. They are our unsung heroes, doing an unbelievable job making a difference in saving lives. Please know that they are all supported and loved I hope they never lose sight of the fact that many people will see their families and enjoy their lives again because of their impact and selfless service. I want to thank them for their courage and for their bravery and for putting their life on the line to help others. I am proud to present uh, this letter of introduction from our newest leaders uh, on the rescue squad. Kenilworth Council and Mayor, good afternoon. I hope all is well. The Kenilworth Rescue Squad has undergone a recent transformation in leadership, and we would like to take this opportunity to introduce ourselves. My name is Danny Morrow, and I have been appointed as the acting captain of the Kenilworth Rescue Squad for the 2022-2023 calendar year. CC'd on this email is my lieutenant, Colleen Sesselman. Colleen and I were both raised in Kenilworth, attending Harding and Brearley, Growing up, we were involved in community through many different avenues, sports, recreation, after-school clubs, Relay for Life, Girl Scouts, and more. 
As adults, we are beyond grateful for the opportunity to serve the community that helped us grow into the people we are today. My time at the Kenilworth Rescue Squad started in June of 2016. I received my EMT certification my senior year of high school and have served at the Kenilworth Fire Department Rescue Squad ever since. After high school, I went on to receive my bachelor's degree in elementary education and psychology. I currently serve as a first grade teacher in Elizabeth Public School District. Colleen joined a rescue squad in 2017 and went on to become a registered nurse in 2021. Over the years, we have developed a passion for providing emergency medical care to the citizens of Kenilworth. Throughout our time as EMTs, we have responded to a vast variety of calls, pediatric, geriatric, trauma, overdoses, suicide attempts, medical calls, motor vehicle accidents, COVID-19 victims, falls, CPR, and more. In addition to responding to medical emergencies, we have volunteered for countless carnivals, served as standby for David Riley High School sporting events and community fundraisers. As we transition from our roles as EMTs to officers of the rescue squad, we want to get off on the right foot. In January, we brought, brought our ambulances to the First Aid Council's redo rig inspection. And all ambulances passed with uh, flying colors, I'm sorry, it was rodeo um, rig inspection. This is one of our proudest accomplishments thus far considering how rigorous and thorough the inspection is. Our plan we have for the coming month is to recruit new members from graduating senior, uh, seniors from David Riley High School. We have been in touch with administration and have been invited to present to David Riley High School seniors this upcoming March. We are eager to embark on this year of leadership for our organization that is very near and dear to our hearts. Our goal as officers for 2022-2023 is to help progress the Kenilworth Rescue Squad and to con continue to maintain the strong relationships we have with our community. We look forward to working with you all this coming year and do not hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you, Danny and Colleen. And um, I'll, I'll read their email address, uh, Danny Morrow, which is D Morrow, M A U R O, at kenilworthfire.org. And Colleen Sesselman, C S E S S E L M A N, at kenilworthfire.org. If anyone wants to reach out to them. And uh, I'm truly grateful to these <coughs> young girls and their devotion to Kenilworth. Okay, I'd like to move on to the finance report. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as you can see on, on the agenda, a couple items uh, I'd like to just point out. Uh, we are authorizing the retention of a real estate appraiser, and that's with the Merck Tax Appeal Litigation, uh, and that's the, the expert will, will be our essential, uh, essentially our, our, our weapon to go against Merck. Uh, with regard, they're going to have an appraiser, an expert, and we're going to have one. Uh, and hopefully, um, things won't be as bad as they may possibly be in the ongoing litigation. Uh, but anyway, that's just a necessary step in the litigation moving forward. Uh, also, you'll see in the resolutions um, would be that we are going to, I guess, put out for for bid um, various uh, old photocopiers. Uh, five of them, and um, at a minimum bid of $200 a piece. Hopefully, we'll get uh, you know substantial well, some money back on, on our return on these purchases. Um, they are. And I did a Google search online. I mean, right now they're going for used ones are going for about $1,000 a piece. So hopefully, we can get uh, some some uh, revenue from the sale of those five photocopiers. And another resolution uh, we have on the agenda with finance is the um, the application for the Union County to the Union County Board of Chosen Freeholders uh, regarding uh, grants, uh, and we will be making an application for uh, to the county uh, for record management, scanning, um, repair, and replacement of borough sidewalks, as well as. Um, uh, streaming equipment. Uh, I guess, Laura, we never, we never really. Uh, that's something we we're looking into. The streaming, the streaming of the meetings. Correct? Is that would be it? Okay. So that's, that's uh, 
I mean, it's, 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 do, do we ever get a number on that? I'm sorry. Or, yes. Okay, great. What, do you know what the number is? Um, he gave me a ballpark figure of about $50,000. So if we can, uh, if I can get the grant secured and have the county pay for it instead, all the better. Even, uh, and, uh, great. Uh, again, it's, we, we pay a lot of money to the county. It's, it's, way, it's, it's our way, um, the mayor and council's way of, of getting something back for the money we pay for. Um, and let's see, we also received a, a letter confirming from the Roy Valley Sewage Authority, something I mentioned earlier in the year, that in fact uh, we will be, uh, our 2022 assessment will be uh, close to $30,000 less than it had been, uh, which was a reduction of over 2%. Um, lastly, um, our CFO isn't here tonight, but uh, I've, I've asked, um, that we schedule budget meetings. Uh, I see. I sent an email out uh, to Ken and Laura, CCing Joe and uh, and Mark, uh, Councilman David, uh, that we hopefully schedule meetings for the first next week because um, this it might be if possible. Uh, by statute, we we have to have this budget introduced by the first meeting in April. So really, we only uh, we only have a month left. So I don't know how many meetings it's going to take, and what's the extent of the meetings. So uh, I've asked that we uh, we schedule them next week if at all possible. Uh, and that's all I have. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Department of Public Works, Councilman David is absent. Um, does anyone have a report? Okay. Uh, um, Department. I'm just a reminder. Uh, the uh, department reports are going to be coming at the second meeting. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Department of Public Safety, Councilman Zimmerman. Thank you, Mayor. Chief Seuss's report for uh, the month of March, I'm sorry, the month of February 22. County Police Department answered 1,500 calls for service and 214 911 calls. There were a total of 32.5 hours of overtime and 234 total hours of training. Officer Richelli has completed his third week of field training and is making tremendous progress. Chief Seuss anticipates him being released from field training no later than the end of March, and he will assume a role in one of the platoons that is currently working short. Chief Seuss and the Public Safety Committee conducted interviews today prior to the council meeting for, open, for the open dispatcher position. And after the, the meeting, after the, the interviews were concluded, we had a, a meeting to a public safety meeting, and Chief Seuss recommended a, uh, one of the candidates, and the committee went with that, and we plan on appointing that person at the next council meeting. Or after the, the background, we said, the background, after the background is done, if it's done before the next council meeting, we'll appoint at the next council meeting. Um, also, Chief Seuss reported that he had an online meeting with the Kenilworth Interfaith Council on February 24th to discuss safety measures for houses of worship in Kenilworth. And we are in the process of planning, or they are in the process of planning a forum on Thursday, March 31st at 7 p.m. at the Kenilworth Gospel Chapel. And the forum, the, uh, forum will be a hybrid online in-person meeting and will deal with safety measures and precautions for houses of worship in the wake of the shooting at the Beth Israel Synagogue in Colleyville, Texas. In-person attendance is limited to approximately 100 to 150 people, and anyone who is interested should reach out to Chief Seuss, Mayor Karlovich, to reserve a, pers uh, a spot uh, via email. And there's, they are going to post something on the borough website and the police uh, Facebook page, I guess. Probably this week we'll post on our social media. I'll put it on my mayor page as well. Okay. And last but not least, uh, I want to congratulate Sergeant Ken Grady Jr. on his promotion to uh, sergeant this evening. And in the wake of that, I spoke with Chief Seuss. There's no officer of the month for this month. Uh, we're going to just go with Sergeant Grady as uh, the officer of the month for being promoted at this point. Uh, also, on a last note, the Kenilworth Police Department obtained a LISO, which is the Law Enforcement Support Organization, uh, record tow truck, a heavy duty, which is military surplus handed down uh, 
through the lease out program through the state police to local police departments, which they obtained yesterday. And they're going to put it in service for disaster relief, any, any type of flooding in town or uh, trees, any kind of uh, disaster. So. Move cars from the road. I'm sorry? We're moving cars from the road. That was the biggest thing. We're moving cars from the road. Yeah, depending on the situation. We would probably have the Don't talk company do it at that point. But in, in, a, in an emergency, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. We could if we had. And that's it, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, planning and zoning, Councilman Finistrello. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm glad to be uh, announcing that the uh, construction third position will be conducting uh, interviews this Thursday. Excellent. That position uh, that's been greatly needed, and uh, hopefully we can fill that in as soon as possible. Um, I've reviewed the resumes along with Scott and Kay, and uh, we've come down to few very good candidates and hopefully we'll uh, find one that's most suitable. The uh, next uh, planning and zoning meeting is March the 10th at 7 p.m. where there's going to be two applications heard, one minor subdivision of the Merck property and a uh, preliminary and final site plan of the uh, area of new redevelopment. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, Recreation and Fire, uh, Councilman Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, February report for the Fire Department, they answered 49 calls, five of which were mutual aids. The First Aid Squad answered 61 calls. For Recreation, this is the final week of basketball. Softball signups have been closed, and within the next few weeks, the teams and schedules will be developed. Uh, we also went to the uh, site inspection of the Mario Park a couple weeks ago. And Mr. Galliano was there with us, and we might do some configuration to that park. And, and we might include the report. Great. Right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Health, Education, and Human Services, Councilwoman Ciceri. Okay. Um, I don't have much of a report for really any any committee, but um, I will tell you, uh, go over the library um, programs that are being held. Um, I know I did speak to this last week, but um, I'll, I'll just go over them again because we do have a new one or two children's um, uh, crafts to be done. Thursday, March 3rd and March 10th, the library's Yorney's program will be held from 2 to 4 p.m. And Tuesday, March 15th, the library Paper Pals program is held from 2 to 4 p.m. Those are adult program. Now, children's programming, um, the Grab and Go St. Patrick's Day String Art Craft for children's ages 4 to 9 while supplies last. Children can check out their favorite book and receive a craft to take home. Thursday, March 10th, Teen Drop-In Craft at 5.30. Teens are welcome to drop into the library and work on a craft. Saturday, March 19th, Doug Barron Cartooning will be held from 12.30 to 1 p.m. 1.30 p.m. for ages 8 to adult. Come learn and how to draw your favorite cartoon characters. That would be cool. But, um, I was always into art, so that's that's a good thing. But other than that, um, I don't have anything else. That's all I have. Now. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, next for consideration is the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? A motion. Second. Okay. Motion made by uh, Councilman Fenestral, seconded by Councilman Zimmerman. Resolutions 86 through 92 are listed on the consent agenda and will be enacted by one motion. All items will be recorded individually in full in the minutes. Councilwoman Cesari? Yes. Councilman David is excused. Councilman Finistrella? Yes. Councilman Pence? Yes. Councilman Puglisi? Yes. And Councilman Zimmerman? Yes. Okay, is there a uh, uh, consideration uh, as the consent agenda, agenda? Is there a motion to approve? That was 93, Mayor. 93, we took that out of order. Not in, I know, but not on the resolution. Yeah, we read that, so we're right, okay. there. All right. um, the next Sorry we have up is the ordinance, the public hearing and adoption of 2022-02, ordinance to amend recreational program fees in section 91-6, article 3, entitled fees for participation in programs. Okay, the purpose of this ordinance is to amend recreational fee schedule. Is there a motion to open the floor for public discussion on this ordinance 2022-02 only? Make a motion. Second. Okay. Does anyone have anything to say on this ordinance and this ordinance only? Please step forward. 
Okay, seeing no one, is there a motion to close the floor for public discussion on this ordinance only? Motion. Second. Okay, is there a motion to approve ordinance 2022-02 for adoption? I make a motion. Second. Okay, we got that Zimmerman and Pence Zimmerman. Be it hereby resolved that Ordinance 2022-02 entitled an ordinance to amend the recreational program fees in Section 91-6, Article 3, entitled Fees for Participation in Programs, was introduced and approved on first reading at the regular meeting of the Borough Council on February 9, 2022, and approved for final passage at the regular meeting of the Borough Council of March 2, 2022. After all persons interested were given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance, be it further resolved that the Borough Clerk is hereby authorized and directed to publish that ordinance in accordance with law. Councilman Cesari? Yes. Councilman David is excused. Councilman Finstrella? Yes. Councilman Pence? Yes. Councilman Puglisi? Yes. And Councilman Zimmerman? Yes. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Okay, I have a proclamation this evening. Um, we all know about what's happening in the world, and I, I just wanted to, to, to do something. Um, Whereas Ukraine has been a sovereign and independent state since the collapse of the former Soviet Union, and whereas the United States and, the, and Ukraine share common values, including freedom, democracy, and the rule of law. And whereas at the direction of President Vladimir Putin, Putin, Russian forces have invaded Ukraine in violation of international law. And whereas we condemn this violence and the threats to innocent civilians in Ukraine. Now therefore, I, Linda Karlovich, the mayor of the Borough of Kenilworth, on behalf of the entire council and the citizens we serve, do by hereby declare Sunday, March 6, 2022, as a day of prayer for the people of Ukraine, as they provoke, face this unprovoked invasion of their country. And witness hereof, I hear unto set my hand the second day of March, 2022. Let's please keep Ukraine in our prayers. Um, our chief, uh, Seuss, put the, uh, the, uh, the yellow and blue lights out in front of Barrow Hall as a reminder, and, and I think um, it's really a, a horrible injustice that's happening right now. Thank you, everyone. Okay, I'd like a motion to open the floor to the public. Make that motion. Second. Okay. Uh, Zimmerman and finish draw. Okay, does anyone have anything to say for the good and well, well-being of Kenilworth? Please come forward and state your name and address. My name is John Zimmerman. I'm at 26 North 7th Street. And um, very nice to be here tonight and see the uh, it's nice to have officer get his uh, sergeants. And mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Fred, for the placing of the lights in front of the mm -hmm. building. Uh, I think it was an excellent idea. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mayor Carla um, my, my problem today is um, uh, we have a sanitation trucks in our town that do the trash collection. And uh, I guess it was five or six years ago we purchased a new truck to replace an older vehicle. Now we have three sanitation trucks. And it's too bad. Mark David is in here, Councilman Mark David, because I'd like to ask him a few questions if he... Well, there's other people on the committee here that can answer that for you, I'm sure. Okay. Well, the problem with truck number three is that the floor is falling out of the truck. Um, it's, I don't know, it's got to be at least 20 years of age, maybe older. It's time to be replaced. Right. It's dangerous when it's driving up and down the streets of Kenilworth, they have to take the recycle, it was being used for recycling the other day, on Tuesday, and they have to take the trash to the recycling center, which is, I don't know if it's in Rawway or where it's located, it's, it's dangerous, that truck should not be on the road. Well, I can tell you that um, when I got involved here, I was shocked at the condition of the vehicles in DPW, and um, I hope the Finance Committee um, put some money forward to replace some of their vehicles because I am in total agreement with you that some of them are over 30 years old and um, the DPW is a very, very important um, department in this town and they provide needed services to our residents. Um, 
So I hope that uh, the Finance Committee takes this into consideration and uh, replaces some of this really outdated and antiquated equipment. Thank um, you. Thank you. And uh, I don't believe that that vehicle could get stopped on the, uh, on the New Jersey Department of uh, Transportation, stops that vehicle on the road that it will be impounded. You because might be right. the, the condition of that vehicle mm -hmm. is, is not usable. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zimmerman. Okay, anyone else? <coughs> Okay. Yeah, real quick, uh, DPW superintendent's here. He, he has to be uh, right You might. Please come up. There's actually two trucks like that that we have. Okay. That's two trucks. So I have three. Okay. We, it, it has to be addressed. I agree 100%. Okay. Uh, if there's nothing else to be brought before the public portion, can I uh, have a motion to close up? <coughs> Chief Rex is kind of with the police department. I just want to take a minute. Uh, I said to you guys before, but I just want to let you know how much I really appreciate getting this promotion done tonight. I think sometimes we all forget how much it means to these guys and their families to work hard as long as they do uh, and, to, and to get to that point. I know, you know, Scott's been a police officer, John was a police officer for a lot of years. Sometimes we forget. And uh, Mayor, you, you've always been a big supporter of our department. The Public Safety Committee, uh, Councilman Zimmerman, Councilman Pence, Councilman Puglisi, and all you guys are just your huge supporters of the police department in this day and age with all the stuff that's going on. I don't think it's yet said enough how much we appreciate your guys' support. And I also want to take a, a, a minute to acknowledge uh, our borough clerk, Laura Ryan, who has been a, a, a big supporter of mine, a big supporter of our department and the town in general. So thank you guys all. It's, it means a lot. And thank you. We appreciate everything you do every day. Okay. Okay, if there's no, um, seeing no one else, I'd like to motion to close the floor for public discussion. Motion, uh, again. Councilman Pence and uh, Ben Estrella. Does any, uh, anyone else have anything to say for the good and welfare of the better? I do. I'd like to just say, Laura, it's been a pleasure working with you. Or, gotta count. <laughs> I'm in my sixth year now. Um, you've always done a professional job. You've always been there. You've always helped. You've always just, you're Laura. You've just been there. Yep. So I can't say much more than that, but thank you for making my life a little bit easier with this job because it's not, it's not easy. I would like to uh, add on that as well. And, and I think um, I'm really grateful, especially for the administrative work that you did for years and the grant money that you brought into this town and everything that you have touched in this town. Uh, it's, it's just incredible the difference in our community since you've been here. And i um, heartbroken to see, see you out. Um, and I thank you um, from the bottom of my heart for everything that you've done for Kenilworth. Obviously, I concur in the Senate, uh, and I would like to uh, reserve my comments um, toward you uh, for, another, for later on. And I, I just, I, I'm just hoping that there's more to come. Oh, I think that, that we, I, I think I bullying and taking uh, stipends that people deserve off the agenda. I hope you all learn from that because you know what there's a human being on the other side of those decisions that you're making and you're hurting people and you're hurting our town and i really hope that that resonates with you tonight well, this, I, is second, this is the second no this is the second person you know what the second person you know what you know you better okay. watch no. the way you speak to women because I've noticed every man no, in yeah. this room has yeah. respect. It's not you political. No, no, no. It's not oh, political. No, no, no. You know, don't you know even go there. Don't All right. Mean. Okay. There's nothing else to be brought before the council. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion.